how to make decisions and particularly health and medical decisions. So with all of the choices that we have, the treatment options that are available, it's not hard to find ourselves consumed by the energies of paralysis by analysis and making decisions that are not in our best interests. The question that arises, where should we begin the journey and what exactly should we focus our attention on? In a future video, I'm gonna talk about something called the focus funnel, which is this in-depth exploration and map that's gonna direct us and tell us exactly how to prioritize things. For now, I wanna talk about some easy practical tips that I discuss with patients regularly. So when we think about making medical decisions or any decision, right, for that matter, we need to ground ourselves in multiple energies or dimensions so we can see the big picture and to ensure we do not succumb to the path of least resistance, the past of pain and suffering, we're simply just going in the wrong direction. For starters, we must look at subjective energies, how we feel. This includes our intuition, the right brain and the heart, our interest, our level of motivation, and is it even necessary? Second, we must look at the objective findings and call upon our analytical brain. So objective testings like blood, MRIs, have been the gold standard in conventional medicine. For example, if your blood work is good, then you're good, even though you're feeling like crap. Or if your blood work is bad, let's treat the markers, not you, and see if we can make the blood work look better through medication and surgery, regardless of how you're feeling. If the blood work looks good, you're good. Objective testing, however, is only part of this equation. It is not the entire picture. You shouldn't base your medical decisions on just solely this. How many people have been told they are normal and then have a heart attack the following week or given a clean bill of health and diagnosed with cancer months later? So the third area has to do with health advantages. In other words, we want to compare long versus short-term benefits and costs. And the last area is our season of life, which truly dictates whether a particular practice or therapy is nourishing or toxic. For example, metaphoric summer practices include action and achievement, while a season of winter begs for rest and recovery. What I typically see is problems arise with patients when we use winter practices in a season of summer and vice versa, right? So imagine a loved one suddenly passes and a person continues their perpetual summer day-to-day -day hustle and bustle without taking time to metabolize their emotions, grieve, and welcome the temporary season of winter. Or imagine a person who stays in a perpetual season of winter, apathy, depression, fed by endless nights of TV binging, overeating, excess alcohol, while at the same time, spring and summer are knocking at their door, offering the gift of rebirth. So with all that said, when you look to make a health decision, use over these different areas, sit in a posture and become witness to all of the subjective and objective energies, breathe and make a decision as all these energies come together in a coherent manner. One of the most important pieces to leave you with, right, is to remember that tomorrow is a new day. Tomorrow you are allowed to make a new or different decision, especially if new information arises subjectively or objectively. This is not black or white. Therefore, give yourself the gift of certainty in the moment and know that tomorrow or next week, you can revisit and make a more nourishing decision if that's needed. Hope this helped and thanks so much for listening.